Hey everybody, I'm back and we're going to do part three of our series on JASP, which is um, following along with the how-to guides that we made this summer so that people can use this for their like introductory to statistics course or just familiarize yourself with how to do things in JASP. So we're kind of moving from how do I install it and some basic use principles to how do I really dig in and get working. So when we enter data in Excel, there's a bunch of ways that we can enter data in any particular program, but Excel being one of the most um, accessible ones. You can also do this with the open office version. And so we're going to suggest following the tidy data rule. So tidy data is where each person gets their own row. So for a long time on my channel, I've called this each person's their own unique snowflake and they get their own row. Um, and so we're, <clears throat> keeping each person with their own data. And then each column is a different variable. So we've got people as rows or participants or um, anything that is your subjects in the study. And then each column is a different variable. So to create data, we can start typing in basic Excel here, column A, row one. And so I've already got that data set created here but what we've done is we've just started typing at the top left and so our first column here is a variable that's a categorical variable uh, for gender and instead of using labels like one and two we're just going to enter the actual na um, names of those labels and that will save you some time from um, changing the labels in JASP it also will allow you to just <clears throat> keep track of this fact that it's gender and you don't have to later be like what was one again what was two again so just use the actual label now we've got a variable called loves cats so people rated their cat happiness here and so that allows us to keep people's scores together with their own gender so i'm female i have an eight i love cats versus i am male and i have a two because i hate cats okay. um and so JASP will understand that that first row of data is the name of the variable. Okay. Starting in that second row, so let's hit enter here and keep them together, we'll add some data for our participants. And we're just kind of making this up as we go, but you might enter the real data from your study. And JASP will interpret that second row as the start of the data points, so each participant in your study. This would be considered tidy because every person has their own row and each column is a different variable. So a quick note about entering ordinal, categorical, nominal text variables. Make sure that your spelling is the same across all of them. <clears throat> and so if you have one that's capitalized and one that's lowercase, it will treat those as different groups. Okay. And you also need to make sure that you don't have spaces unless you want spaces. So male with a space after it is treated differently than male without the space after it. Okay. And um, one way you can see that when you go to create maybe a table of your data, just to check, um, which you can fix by doing a find and replace in Excel. Uh, the other thing that you can do uh, that sometimes works is on the data tab, if you click filter, if you have different versions, it will show you. It's not perfect because it kind of ignores spaces, but it'll at least give you a quick glance if you have hundreds of columns or rows, hundreds of rows. Okay. Now, things that I see students do that I'm gonna tell you not to do, it's very tempting to do the data more like this, where females get their own column and males get their own column. When you're starting to learn data science and statistics, that organization makes sense. Here's all my female data, here's all my male data. However, when they get it into the program, it doesn't, um, it doesn't tend to work very well because it, it gets confusing if you have, let's say, multiple variables. So not only do you have gender and loves cats, but you also have how much do they love dogs. And so you'd have to have multiple sets of these columns and then it's like, wait, this, what female is this? You have three female columns. So the short answer is this uh, visually makes sense, but only for very simple designs. And we're not, we're gonna go with the tidy data rule so that once you get into more complex designs, you just add more columns for your variables versus adding more 
data sets because you want to keep everybody together. So this one female person you want to have all of their scores for. Another thing that you can do after your data is entered is sometimes um, scale variables get interpreted funny whether or not they have decimals. And I think they're working on fixing this, but if you want to just kind of like circumvent problems with, uh, with numeric data is that you can highlight, go over here, so I'm gonna turn off my filter here, highlight everything, and in the home tab, good grief, uh, instead of general here, change it to number. And that'll give it two decimal points. That solves a little bit of problems that we have with whole numbers and histograms. So having it have those decimal points, even though um, we don't have, like it's not 8.0 in the sense of precision to 8.0, uh, it's just the number eight, but that will solve you a, a couple of little issues that um, <clears throat> occur when you don't have decimals. All right, so uh, you could also get rid of those numbers so you can have it uh, set to number and then also take out those numbers. So this button here will decrease the number of decimals. Okay, but it's still interpreting this as a number. So you can kind of play with how you want it to look. All right, so let's say we want to take this data and now use it in JASP. JASP reads comma separated files. Norm Excel files are um, S L X S L X <laughs> for Excel file. Okay. But we want to pick comma separated values. There are a couple of options, but you want to use this, the one without another special indicator. So the one that just says comma delimited. Um, so on max, it also gives you the option of like Macintosh special or MS DOS special, like just pick the one without any extra stuff next to it. On a Windows machine, I think it just shows you one version of, of this. But if you want to pick the one that doesn't have any special characters, um, if your data does have like unique characters like um, umlauts or um, some other special characters you don't see on your normal um, QWERTY keyboard, you can pick a different encoding. Um, but I suspect the people who deal with that will have computers that will also help them deal with that. So. Now, when you go to do that, so let me show you. This one's already saved. We'll say we're saving it for the first time. So I'd hit save. Okay. Um, it would show me, ask me where I wanted to save it. So let me do save as real quick. Okay. So this is the window that you might see the first time you pull it up. So be sure you change file format to comma delimited. So I'm gonna come down here, comma separated values. I'm gonna hit save. Mine's asking me if I want to replace because I already have this file, but you'll see this as well. So some features in your workbook might be lost if you save this as comma separated. It's essentially going to lose some of the Excel formatting, but that's okay because that's what we want. So just say yes. And it'll ask you that every time you hit save. So a minute ago, I hit save just to save uh, while we were working. And it asked me, do you want to do sure you want to do this? So this kind of worries students sometimes if you aren't familiar, but just say yes. So now, how can I edit that file if I already have it in JASP? So let us go to JASP and work with this same file we've been working with. So I'm gonna open it, so go File, Open, Computer. I think this is in my, oops, back. Updated Guides folder. So find it on your computer. Mine is Excel data entry here. Open. Now there's lots of cool things I can do here. I'm gonna just kind of follow along with my tutorial. So now we've opened that file into JASP. If I wanna just edit the data, we can double click on the cell. Okay. If you don't have Excel open, it will open it. If you already have Excel open, it'll just flip windows. So I could double click on one of these cells. It's gonna flip me back to Excel. So let's say I wanna change some of these. I got my numbers all mixed up. Nothing happens until you hit save. So let me go back to it. Let me kind of show you both windows at the same time here. So I've edited this data and 
Um, it doesn't like auto edit into Jasp, but once I hit save and then I say yes, you'll see that over here it's now switched to the new data. So editing is opening in Excel, hitting save, and then that will trigger it to reopen basically in Jasp. So in this particular example, I just added some more data and then we updated the data. <clears throat> Some other things that you want to look at is the type of variable. So uh, what we were talking about a minute ago with the numbers is if we imported the variables as whole numbers, it often will interpret them as nominal, <coughs> which you can see here kind of in this window where the uh, little label next to it is these three circles. The three circles with an A implies that it's text the three circles without the A implies that it is a number, but since it's a whole number, it's treating it as nominal. If we look at what happened when I opened mine, it actually came through as scale because in my data set, my uh, Excel data set, uh, I had the little, I had added the zero. Now you notice there's no point zero over here, but it did interpret that as scale data instead of ordinal or nominal data. But if you wanted to change that, you would click on the little like symbol itself. We could be, we could do this as scale, which means it's a ratio or interval number, ordinal, like a ranked number, or nominal, meaning more categorical. Um, if you're using a built-in data set from JASP, they don't want you to screw up the original data, so they'll ask you to like uh, generate a data file. Uh, so we, you can click generate data file to create your own version. And so we can play where, around with um, changing the types here from nominal back to scale. So you see it didn't really screw anything up. Here, if I tried to put this in at scale, it just won't let me because it won't take text as a scale variable. So Jasp will kind of keep you from doing stuff that you shouldn't do. And then we'll move on to creating graphs. So that's how you edit data in JASP. If that's all you needed, you can run away, but stay tuned also for graphs. Okay. And so um, you can create graphs in JASP based on the analysis, but they often really don't uh, have all the information that you want, or, um, and, and also additionally, they're not editable at the moment. So this will teach you how to make graphs in Excel um, that will be maybe what your teacher wants for their homework or you want to publish. So we'd make a separate Excel file that is saved as an Excel file for this example. And I've got an example of some of them worked already, but you'll notice, let's just say if I did save as, this is an actual Excel workbook. If you save this as a CSV, it will delete your graphs. So Excel workbooks can have all these extra features. Comma separated values or CSV files are literally just text with commas. And so that's useful for JASP interpreting your data. But let's say we want to just make a graph for our homework. We'll use this as an Excel file okay. or whatever the open office version of that is. Okay. All right. So let me go back over here. So how do I make a bar or line graph? Okay. Well, there's two parts here. It's either one independent variable or two. Okay. And so the first thing you have to do is enter the data you want to graph, which is usually the means of each group for a bar or line graph. Okay. You can put this information in any cell in Excel that you'd like. Okay. Second, you want to enter any secondary information, which is like the standard deviation or the standard error of the means that depends on your instructor to make the error bars you see on a graph. Well, what are error bars? So this is an example of an error bar. So we're making a graph here that has down. I just like searched an example, one from Google Scholar. And so we would be making this bar graph with the means and then these um, capped lines here are error bars. Okay. Every error bar can be different. So kind of do what your instructor wants, but it could be one standard deviation, could be a standard error, could be the confidence interval. So let's say we want to calculate descriptives for our bar and line graphs. Okay. 
Plus, if you don't have means and standard deviations of your data just yet, you can calculate those in JASP. So we've opened our JASP file that we created earlier, and we're going to go to Descriptives and Descriptive Statistics. So let me do that. Let's go to Descriptives, Descriptive Statistics. To get just the means for loves cats, I can just move it over from the left to the right. And now that I know, I know there are seven data points with a mean of 3.85 and a standard deviation of 1.95 for this example. But I probably want this by gender, meaning each group separately. So I'm gonna take gender here and put it into the split category. And so that gives me a nice little um, chart of the means and standard deviations for each gender separately. You can also copy that and stick that into Excel. So I'm not gonna, uh, I'm gonna start a new one. If I can remember how, there we go. Well, let's say we just wanna paste this. So I'm gonna do Control V or Apple V. It doesn't paste perfectly into Excel, but it does give us, it's pretty close. So really it's just a couple lines off. Can't work my keyboard today, there we go. Now, if we want to make a bar graph from that, okay, this explains everything I just clicked on. You can also, sorry, I got ahead of myself, click statistics down here and get more options. So we could also add the standard error if your instructor wants standard error instead of standard deviation. And what we do is we'd uh, type those into Excel in some format. And so the way that I have them in the uh, example that's provided online is to um, put them where you have the means for one group and the standard deviations separated. And the reason I'd suggest that, so you can see that here, is as we get going to making these, it is very tempting if you have it in this format to just highlight all four of these numbers. And you don't want to do that because that creates a graph of the bar graph where there's a bar for the mean and a bar for the standard deviation. And that's not what we want at all. So we want to have the means with the standard deviations on those bars. So we don't want, I try not to get students to enter data like this. I try to keep them separate like this, just so that um, it's a little harder to put all of it in one graph where incorrectly. So I'll close some of this stuff just so we don't have so much open here. Now, once I get these entered, how do I end up with this graph over here? Because this is the final graph. So let's go back over here. So what we do is we'd highlight the group names and means, click insert, and pick your 2D line or 2D graph, sometimes called a column graph, to uh, get, the, get the basic plot. Okay. So we come back over here, and we're going to leave our finalized graph and see if we can match them up over here. I want to highlight here, click insert, 2D column here, and that's the first part of the graph. So we got some room to, to go here because our graph is not as cute as this one, but that's the first part. The next thing you do, if you, uh, this is if you want a line graph, so you do insert line graph. Uh, first of all, this chart's pretty, pretty blah. So if we want to do this in APA style, we're going to delete chart title because you don't include titles. Okay, so we're going to simply click on the words and hit delete. And so we want to, or we could turn it off through add chart element. So let me back up here, could take this and just click on it and I'm going to hit the delete button on my keyboard. Some other things that we want to do. We want to change the fonts. So we could highlight everything. I tend to actually do this at the very end um, of, the, of the example, how to change the fonts, but we could also change the um, fill for the bars. Okay, so let's hold on to the fonts and let's just change this to gray. So I've got this highlighted. There's a change colors option, but this gives us more color schemes, but it also has a gray option that we could use to pick. You can also double click and that will pull up the fill option over here, 
Or you could pick a, your own favorite color. Let's make them dark gray. Okay. Uh, oh, I did the border. Crap. Okay. I want to do fill, which is, I lost it. There it is. Sorry. Click on the little paint bucket. Click on fill. Let me try again. <laughs> and then now I can pick my own favorite color. And I filled only one of them because I only have one of them selected. Rats. <laughs> so that's how I can do each one at a time. So we're, we're going to hold on to the font. We're going to do this in a minute. Okay, so this shows you how to do fill. Add X and add Y axis labels by clicking on the graph and then add chart element. Let's come over here. So add chart element axes uh, titles. Primary horizontal and primary vertical. And we want to change these to be something interpretable. So I'm going to double click on them. Sometimes it acts a little weird, but you can highlight everything. You can say this is gender. Click again, highlight everything. I hit control A to do that. We have loves cats rating. So now we've told everyone, now gender for men and women is pretty obvious, but like always having those labels to fully define your chart. And let's get into the little bit harder part, which is to add um, the error bars. Okay. So this is the step-by-step -step guide. I'm just going to walk you through it over here. Okay, so I'm going to click on the series where I get both of them highlighted. Add chart element. Error bars more error bars it's going to come up over here in this uh, editing window and i already had it open but it's this three bar tab one we're not going to let it choose for us we're going to hit custom specify value and this is where you would highlight your standard deviations that you wrote a minute ago and it will be in the positive error value part now error bars should be equal on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to click on this little button here to get the negative one. Highlight both of those. If you click on it again, either way, these two things should say the same thing. So don't, uh, sometimes it like screws up. I'll just show you. Sometimes people get excited because this one's already highlighted. So they highlight the first two and then they just click here and highlight these two. Uh, oh, and Excel now works correctly. <laughs> okay, it used to leave the little one and curly brackets in there. Make sure that these two look exactly the same. Hit OK. You'll see that your error bars will change based on um, what you just selected. And the reason that we want to do custom ones is so that you have control. So this is the actual standard deviation for your data. So see men and women's are not the same. Uh, Choosing standard deviation here as one of the options creates a standard deviation of the two means, which is not what you want. So we want the standard deviation of the data that we calculated, not the standard deviation of men, you know, these two numbers here. All right, so I told you to hold on to font. So this explains how to do all of that stuff, right? And this is looking pretty good. Okay. So. I skipped font a minute ago because I always find it easiest to do at the end. If you select the whole graph, so nothing is really highlighted, come over to home and then pick your favorite font. Usually Times New Roman or Arial. And I made the font just a little larger. You can highlight each piece individually and change it. There's a place to do it. I don't know if you can do it over here in the format access window because it's generally done up here in this area under home but instead of just doing one and then doing x and then doing the access titles if you highlight the entire graph you can do it all at once so let's say i want to change to Arial, i can do all of them at once the only other thing that we might consider changing is the y-axis in case that it doesn't actually start at zero so let's say for our rating it ranged from one to eight what we can do is change the bounds of the axis. You can also right click on this and format axis. And it'll pull up this window over here. But as we can see, I got the, the three bar part. Now I can change the, where the axis runs to. So let's do one, two, five. Okay. 
And so once I click out, there we go. I had to kind of come out and come back into it. Uh, it changed now to one to five because zero is not a valid option. You can also change the tick marks. You can go nuts. You can say, just use the unit of one. So just show me one through five. Okay. Uh, so I don't have to have quite so many lines. So there's lots of things that you can do here. Okay. And so that's how you'd make a single bar graph. Okay. So I'm gonna get rid of this one. Leave it with the one that we had from our example. I tell you that two IV bar charts are very similar. Okay. And so instead of having um, one set of numbers here that we make it with, now we have two sets of numbers here. So the only tricky part here is just lining up your error bars. So when you select a set of error bars, so let's say if I was trying to add these, I would select my blue series here, which is men. So blue is men. And you'll see how it has this highlighted up here. This is where it's making those numbers from. If I come over to chart design, add chart element, error bars, more. I have them set up already, but if I hit custom and specify value, you'll notice that what I wanna do is highlight the same area that ha was highlighted a minute ago. So uh, it had men, the, the men row highlighted. So I'm gonna use the men row down here. So you kind of have to know if you need to go down or across. Okay. Um, so that's why it's always helpful to look at which one. I click on it, right? It shows me, okay, I need to go across. Okay. Otherwise the steps are exactly the same. Um, Cause when you highlight all four of these, what'll happen when you click insert 2D bar chart, it will actually assume that you want this uh, two IV graph. And then from there, you could keep going exactly like what we just did for the one IV graph. But last but not least, let's talk about scatter plots. Okay. And there are examples of a two IV graph down at the bottom of this Excel sheet, or this how-to guide. Okay. So for two, uh, for Scatter plots, which involve two independent variables. We have to start basically with the raw data. So we could copy over the data from, um, and let's just recreate this one because whatever happened here is, is uh, not APA appropriate. So we're just gonna hit delete and start over. <laughs> so um, you would highlight the, or copy over all of the data Highlight both columns, hit insert, sorry, I keep hitting data. And then here's scatter plot. So X, Y scatter, pick the first one. Okay. So that automatically gave us this kind of really ugly graph. And what we want to do, is start cleaning that up. So we'll turn off the chart title like we did earlier, but deleting it. We'll change the font, but we should probably add the axes titles first. Okay, so a lot of this is gonna be really similar. So I'm gonna hit loves cats, hit delete. Then I'm going to go add chart element, primary horizontal, add chart element, primary vertical. And I'd have to label this with loves cats and loves dogs. So it will put the first one as X. So this first one is loves dogs. Okay. This one, whoops clicked in here is loves cats rating and as my students will tell you that I'm really particular about the uh, capitalization making it proper case um, that'll depend on your instructor but um, they should be printed in proper case to have like a nice looking chart we can highlight the entire graph. So I've just clicked on the graph, click on home, change the font. Let's go with Times New Roman and 12. Okay. So we're getting there. What else can we do? Okay. So I've added the axis titles, like her example here. I can change the color of the dots. Okay. So we can click on a dot. We'll get, it'll highlight all the dots. You can actually change the color here, I believe, under fill. We can change it um, if we come over to, sorry, change colors, so we can make them 
gradient. Uh, you can right click, you can double click on them. Sorry, click. I want the whole set of graphs though. Right now it's just giving me one dot at a time, which is no good. Click on them again. So now we can do fill when I have all the dots highlighted. Uh, you can actually change the markers to be different, like we'll, um, some other things. Come on, Excel, stop with the highlights. So built in so I could pick uh, triangles instead. So there are like, so many customization options. Right? We're going to get rid of these bars because you don't tend to see these printed by clicking on them so that they're highlighted. So you see how they have the little dots on the end and just hitting delete so that we don't get the grid lines. That'll depend on your instructor as well. Sometimes it's helpful for you to see that how it's working, um, but generally people don't print them with those grid lines because then it gets hard to read. But the other thing that you're, you might get asked to do is add a line of best fit. So let's go back here. And so this will be my, maybe for your regression chapter. So you can click add chart element and trend line, which we didn't see before because we didn't have the right type of graph. So chart design. Add chart element, trend line. Mostly they'll tell you to do linear, and that will add just a linear line, which if you want to edit it, you can double click on it, and it'll bring up the options to um, display the equation on the chart or display R squared on the chart. Um, so you can tell this is fake data because this is like almost perfect, perfectly aligned, right? Um, so you can have some options to editing that as well. And so that might be really good if you're in the like regression chapter and you're trying to see how well X predicts Y. Okay. So this continues to talk about how to add all of those. Um, and that would be general rules for making graphs. Um, obviously the first rule is always do what your instructor wants, but these should help you at least get to a somewhat APA formatted graph for your assignments.